Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday, these have all become the most popular holiday shopping days of the entire year and for good reason. So how should you approach these shopping days with your financial well-being in mind? And how should you approach these shopping days so that you don't find yourself in a financial mess once the holidays come to a close? Welcome back to the VIP Financial Ed channel. This is where we're all about helping you go further, faster financially. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Matthew Pillmore. I'm the president of a company called VIP Financial Education. And today we're gonna to be talking about one of the biggest spending days of the entire year. That's right, guys, the infamous Black Friday. Now, even though I've never been one to head out amongst the crowds on Black Friday, I of course have several friends and family members that do it every year and they absolutely love it. And you know what? To each their own. Now, I know that when it comes to those friends, they're all about getting the best deal. They like the crowds, they find it invigorating. They also love the general energy out in the malls and stores. So this Friday, as the uh, tryptophan is wearing off from your delicious holiday meal, there are gonna be seven things that you should be keeping in mind while navigating the Black Friday crowds. Be sure to stick around for a bonus tip. I'm gonna give you one at the end. So let's go ahead and get right into the list. All right, so the first point I wanna make is you should probably sit down in advance, set a budget, and then be sure to stick with it. Now, this channel is not about setting budgets. This channel is not about restriction. This channel is not about sacrifice and spending less on lifestyle design. We want you to be able to have the cash flow to live whatever life is most ideal to you. But this point still cannot be stressed enough. You've gotta make sure that you're sticking to a list and that the specific things you're headed out to get are what you're focused on. You know, it's in the store's best interest to get you inside the store. And they do that by putting out their craziest advertised deals. And therefore you go in, you spend more than what you were planning on. You get other things that you weren't planning to buy. And there are various sales all the way throughout the store inside. So the question needs to become, do you really need you know, a dozen $3 DVDs when you already have a Netflix account? Start asking yourself, how can I keep the lifestyle I have, but spend less on it? And if you set your own guidelines and then you main control throughout your shopping, you can actually come out a winner with your holiday shopping done and you can do it frugally. The second point today is I want you to compare deals and make sure you're doing your research again ahead of time is always best. And there are many of the same deals that are gonna be out there. So just do your homework, find the best ones. This may actually save you time too because you might be able to find everything on your list in one or two stops versus hitting up several stores which usually leads to over purchasing too. So research here is critical to ensuring that you're actually getting the best deals possible. Sometimes you're actually gonna find that items that are marked on sale actually are not on sale. Certain stores will actually raise their retail prices so that they can put items on sale without actually marking them cheaper in any way from where they were just a few months ago. Another way to stay really informed is by signing up for your favorite retailer's email alerts so that you can take advantage of any specific discounts that are being provided. You can also stay up to date on the deals by looking for Black Friday ads in newspapers, mailers, online. The bottom line is this, if you do your, your homework, you do your research, you can make it out having spent a lot less during your holiday list. And that's kind of the whole point here is maximizing cash flow. The third point here is you wanna be sure to ask for gift receipts. And this one is really important when buying gifts as the receiver that you're sending the gift to may not be able to actually return or exchange a gift without any proof of purchase. Beyond that, they may even receive an exchange at a lower price than what you paid for the item. So it's always recommended that you get that gift receipt and then it just ensure that you're including it with the gift. That way everybody's happier in the end. The fourth point here today is to ask about the return policies, the restocking fees and the refunds ahead of time. So you're gonna wanna ask before you make your purchase. Although companies are not required to give you your money back, they should post their return and refund policies at the cashier or nearby. If you don't see it there, make sure you're asking the cashier before you check out. Also, always ask about restocking fees and then save your receipts in one easy to find, easy to remember place so that you don't lose them. As we mentioned in number three, many companies will actually require you to produce a receipt if you do return a product. Number five today is I'm recommending that you use your credit cards for every purchase that you make this year. Do that so that you can earn rewards on those purchases and be sure to separate your business purchases versus your personal purchases on two completely separate isolated accounts. This is something that we mention a lot on this channel. And the main thing to keep in mind is that the best way to utilize a credit card is to always pay them off in full every single month. If you're using credit cards that have a balance carrying from one month to the next, it is best to avoid using using those credit cards 
and just simply go with liquid cash or debit card. So go out there, swipe that credit card, as long as you're paying it off in full every single month, earn the rewards, but be sure it is actually being paid in full. Your credit score will benefit, as will your wallet or your next vacation or whatever the benefits are available through your credit card rewards. One last point on that. Oftentimes, merchants will offer a discount by signing up for their credit card program. This is highly discouraged. Most of the time, retail account credit cards will actually harm your credit versus help it, which will hardly be worth the 10, 20, percent discounts that you might be able to expect at the time of your purchase. It seems attractive, but usually in the long run, it's not gonna pay off. The sixth point today is to skip the lines and just hit up Cyber Monday deals instead. And this one is better suited towards people like me who aren't really into the big crowds or the craziness that can come with Black Friday. And the real big benefit here is that you can save obviously for a few deals here and there by going to the stores, but most of the store deals you're gonna be able to find online through Cyber Monday. And I would also consider weighing in that even slightly cheaper deals in the store might not be worth the time and energy that you're spending in the crowds. So something to think about for those of you who enjoy doing your shopping online like I do. The seventh and final point I wanna make today is I would consider giving the money that you're actually saving by shopping through Black Friday or Cyber Monday to a charity that is important to you. And although this isn't really necessarily a shopping tip or even a cash flow maximization tip, it's important for me to include this because I believe that giving back is a very, very important part of financial well being. The better you're doing, the more you should be up leveling those that need it the most. So why not take that money that you're saving, put it to good use, donate it to your local food bank or give it to the Red Cross or any really organization that you support. But this really is the season right now to be giving back. So in wrapping up this video, I wanted to also mention a real quick bonus tip. Now, even though I'm not the biggest fan of going out and shopping the big Black Friday crowds. I am a big fan of the Small Business Saturday. And, and this is something that was created a few years back as the Black Friday for the little guys. And as a huge supporter of small businesses, I really enjoy spending my holiday gift dollars at smaller shops or with the single product online retailers. And when you go with these smaller companies that are typically producing their own product, you know your money's actually going to support an individual or a family. And I always think that's a big bonus. Not only that, but you could actually also end up finding a few more unique and thoughtful gifts for your loved ones by shopping small businesses. So how do you spend your time and money this weekend? I'm curious to know, do you usually work your way through these crowds on Black Friday? Do you hit up the smaller businesses on Saturday or do you add to your cart through Cyber Monday? Go ahead and uh, share your comments below. Would love to hear from you. Add any tips that you might have for the big shopping days coming up and then smash that like button if you want us to continue to do more videos on shopping related topics. Also go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you're not yet a subscriber to the channel. Make sure you consider doing so and then turn on the bell notifications. We do upload videos every week on this channel, several times a week in fact. So make sure that notification is on so that you're alerted every time a new video is uploaded. I wanna thank you again for checking out the VIP Financial Ed channel. We really do appreciate your viewership more than you could ever know. And until we see you on the next video, make it a really great day today and take care. Thank <laughs> you.